This is going to be a one of its kind tutorial because a lot of you have been asking whether or not you can get characters to make a couple of actions simultaneously at the same time. And the answer is always no, you can't. Why? Because the way how these characters are programmed into the software, that they can only make one action at a time. And that's a bit of a problem in Create Studio 3. But luckily, we have a workaround, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this tutorial to help you save your time and create an illusion that characters can make two actions simultaneously at the same time. And before we dive deeper into this, I've got a beautiful example that I want to share with you. Let's go ahead and watch it and then come back to start creating. Ali, can you help us make two simultaneous actions? Yeah, I could do that, but I don't want to spend much time keyframing you guys. So are you saying you don't enjoy animating us? <laughs> Wait a second, I didn't say that. I want to use a shortcut that is much easier and will save everybody's time. Sounds good, Allie. How are you going to do this? Well, I'm going to use a technique that'll create an illusion to make you guys look like you're making two actions at a time. Create an illusion? You must be joking, right? No, I'm not. Since all characters are limited to one action at a time, it's either do it the hard way and take time, or do it the smart way and save time. I like the sound of that, but can you make it quick? Why are you rushing me? I have an important phone call to make. Who do you want to call? I want to call Lenka and tell her the good news about your workaround. Absolutely. Let's get to it. I hope you enjoyed watching the example. Now I'm going to start by showing you the hard way doing it. And then I'm going to show you the smart way to save your time and do it properly. The first one is keyframing the character to make it look as perfectly as you could. And that requires a couple of things. One is going to be a tedious process because you're going to have a lot of keyframes to try and make the character look as perfectly as you could. Two is you have to have a lot of experience working with masks, especially working with the pen tool to create custom masks and be able to animate your characters and make them do a couple of actions at the same time. So let me go into this scene and show you what that looks like. And there you go. So in order for me to apply this effect and have this character make two actions at the same time, I had to duplicate my character. And then if I drag this one above right here, you're going to be able to see that the first part of the body, which is his legs, are masked so that I can only see the legs right there. And then the second part is the upper part, right? And so for me to achieve this, I had to use a lot of keyframes, as you can see on the character's layer. And that was because the character was making a lot of movements while he is uh, raising his hands and giving thumbs up, as you can see. If I zoom in on that part right here on his waist and then go back to the very beginning, you can see or notice the movements that's happening on his waist. But the good news about this is that from a wide angle, you cannot see all those movements. If I press play, it's barely noticeable that there's a mistake going on with this character. It's not looking the right way. And what I did was basically using a track mat for the upper part to keep the keyframes available and be able to animate all the movements. The problem working with characters making other actions and sitting at the same time is that they tend to make a lot of movements. Let's say, for example, you have a guy that's making a phone call. The guy is going to make movements and sway with his body left and right. So it's going to be a little bit tedious for you to keyframe that and make the body sticking to the bottom part of his body, which is his legs, right? Same applies to all characters. So if you're working with Linka or even Leo, you're also going to have the same problem. So once again, this is going to be a tedious process for you to do this. So if I go to the character right there and then go to track mat and then select none, now you're going to be able to see the mask that I created around the character's body and bearing in mind his hands were there. So if I decrease the opacity right there, I just had to bear in mind that his hands was pointing down right like that in order for me to make those hands visible while he's making movements so that when he starts picking up his hands, you would still be able to see them until he show thumbs up. And that's basically how I did it. So again, I'm not going to go through this and demonstrate how I did that because this is time consuming and I don't wish you doing that because 
you're going to be frustrated with the process so i'd rather show you the easy way and a shortcut to making this properly so i'm going to go into my second scene where i have a character right there if i press play you can see that he is kind of like sitting on that chair and he is given thumbs up now if we go to this scene we have another example where he's sitting on a couch but then i want to have a close-up where i want to show another action while he's sitting so the only way for me to do this was basically to create a shortcut that is going to show the character look like he's actually sitting on that couch and making a phone call so if i zoom out right here and then double click you're going to see that the character is actually standing it's just that I positioned him in the right place and in the right perspective to make him look like he's actually sitting. And that's basically what we're going to learn how to do this inside Create Studio 3. It's basically using illusions to make characters look like they're making two actions at the same time. I don't want you to take illusions apart from animation because it's part of your process while animating. It's something that is essential in a lot of your creations to be able to elude your viewers with something that you had to work around to make it look the way you want it. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So I'm going to delete all of this and start from the, from scratch. And then I'm going to go to my studio. And it's very simple, by the way. It doesn't require time. You can only do this in, in a matter of minutes, maybe a couple of minutes or even less than that if you're faster. All you got to do is simply go to the backgrounds and then choose 3D. In the search bar, you can type in office like this. And I'll give you an example. So once you learn how to do this, you can easily apply this on many other scenes. But you just got to make sure that you have to have a chair image separate that you can adjust its size and position behind the character to make it look like the character is actually sitting on that one or if it's going to be a couch then you have to make the couch image separate from your scene to be able to adjust its position and size as well now let's scroll to the bottom until we find the image that we're looking for and you can see all these office backgrounds they have multiple layers so once i drag and drop this into the timeline you can see that it's grouped up and i can simply just ungroup and be able to see all the layers so i simply have the background image i have the chair as a separate image and then i have the desk right there in order for me to achieve that effect first of all i'm going to scale up the desk image like this and make it really big and position it to, towards the bottom of the scene just like that the next thing i want to do is simply scale up the chair as well and then i can drag it until i hide its arms like this and then we now are ready to grab our character but then what we want to do first is grab the desk layer on top so that we can have an empty track between the desk layer and the chair layer that way when we can when we go back to the character creators or any character if you go to the doodle characters the 2d characters or even the standard 3d characters it works exactly the same the process is the same now i'm going to grab tom and drop him between both layers in the timeline and then i'm going to choose the action that i want so i'm going to open up the action list and say i want to make him do a phone call right so i'm going to scroll until the bottom until i see talking on the phone right here and then you're going to notice that he starts to pick up his phone and then make a phone call so i'm going to eliminate that by clicking on the taken uh, talking on the phone uh, button on the character's track to be able to disable the start and the ending animation this way i make the character making a phone call right from the very beginning until the end next we're going to drag the character and make sure he is in the right size like this and the cool thing about the 3d creators is that i can click on the rotate button to enable me to spin the character in whatever angle i want to make sure that he's actually in the right angle sitting on that chair once i've done that i can click on rotate again to exit the mode and then i can scale him up and make sure he's in the right perspective looking like he's sitting on that chair like this and i can extend the layer and make sure it's lined up depending on how long your scene is then we can just go back to the very beginning press play and there you have it now you can see the character is looking like he's actually sitting on that chair and also making a phone call now of course you can decorate your scene however you like and so that was the first example the other example is if the character is sitting on a couch so i'm going to go back to my backgrounds and then i'm going to pick up another background so i'm just going to remove the office and type in home for example then I can scroll down and pick the one that I want. So there you have it. I do have four images with different angles of the same background. Now I'm going to use the one that's ha that has a white shot 
right here and then I will grab my character so I'm going to go back into my character creators I'll drag Linka this time and then I'm going to choose another action for her so we can do a swiping tablet for example let's just choose that from the action list there you go and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the swiping action to make sure that I disable start and disable end like that and then I can resize the character in the right perspective and I may want to zoom in on my scene just like this and then make sure she's in the right position and then when done you can simply just select all layers so basically the background and your scene make sure they're lined up select both layers and then group these guys up then what you want to do next is simply just grab these guys and scale them up like this to have a close-up so all we're going to do is we're going to hold the alt key on our keyboard and then we're going to drag the scene from any corner to scale it up to only view the back of the sofa or the couch right there and we can create that illusion to make the character look like she's actually sitting on that couch and swiping tablet now if you want to mask this scene that's totally fine all you got to do is grab a rectangle shape by hitting the shift key and the letter r to grab a rectangle scale it up and then you can select the rectangle along with your scene right click and then mask these guys and now you have your scene mask so you can animate your scene however you like once you press play again you can see that she's definitely looking like she's sitting on that couch and swiping tablet at the same time of course you can play with her spinning angle um, depending on how you want your character to look like but that's really up to you so that's how you can easily create that illusion by having a close-up shot on your characters along with the chair or couches and make them look like they're actually making two actions simultaneously at the same time like i said i'm going to remind you again that illusion is part of the animation you can't take that a part of your process because it's something essential that you have to use in a lot of your creation to achieve the effect you're trying to display to your audience now if you want to learn more about how i created the custom masks using the pen tool you will find a link that's going to show up on the top right corner click on that that will take you to my masking playlist so if you're somebody who doesn't have experience working with masks at all you can simply click on that button to watch the entire playlist but if you have a bit of a background about working with masks then you can go directly into that particular video that talks about how to work with custom masks using the pen tool and this will show you how you can do it and you know if you want to do it the hard way be my guest but i don't suggest it because you're going to be frustrated with the movements that the character is going to make and you can experience that yourself you already see the kind of movements the character is making you know swing left and right it's kind of a tedious to have to do this and match the character's body with the lower body part which is basically the legs and i also got another video that's going to show up on the end screen uh, where i teach you how to create a zoom call simulation this also has the same technique where you can create that illusion and make characters look like they're sitting on chairs and meeting together on a zoom call so i hope you found this helpful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one Man!